What do you do when you're quarantined? What do you do when you're thrown into that furnace? A few things I want to underline if you're taking notes. Right, one is don't go there alone. The three boys went there together. Three musketeers. Uh, they did not get thrown alone. They went three together. If you are right now at this season where a lot of things are shut down, some of you are in states where you cannot get out of the house, can you be with your family? Be with your two other, three other siblings under 10 though. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that you finally father. Like, oh, finally kids are home. <laughs> Let's get the garage painted. <laughs> Let's fix the sprinklers. Everybody's home. Can you be together? If your family is in a different state, take this time to reconnect with your family. Take this time to build community. Yeah, not with the friends on Facebook not with the friends or followers on Instagram but with real people who actually have real faces real identities and they're not just names they're real people and they're sitting across the table from you this is a good season to spend time with the family this is a time where we are forced to Sabbath every single day you know last week uh, me and my wife um, decided in our state we don't have the law yet that you cannot get out of the house and so we started to go for walks every single day uh, me and my wife and um, Jacko and, and Saul who lives with us and it was so refreshing it was so renewing every single day taking an hour and just spending time together these three men went to the furnace together and so you gather your three maybe two maybe you have five people in the family and those of you precious Russian people who have 16 kids I don't know reach out to the local authorities figure out how you can still do that with the president's um, recommendation of under 10 but I'm pretty sure God will give you grace and so but if you're under 10 listen meet with your family play some games read the Bible together be with your family spend time with your family I'm not talking about everybody on their phones but spend time being with your family it's a good thing to be with your family two or three are gathered in my name Jesus says I am among them and these three guys were there and they were there together something happens when you are in unity it's easier to fight fear depression anxiety and disappointment something happens when you come together even if all of you right now are struggling financially the presence of you together helps you to fight the fear fight the, the anxiety fight the thing of what's gonna happen to us bring your family together mom and dad get the kids out of their rooms they don't they don't need to spend three four hours on TikTok and on snapchat or instagram get them together read the work together cook something together do something together as a family watch a movie rewatch a sermon do something with the family three boys went together and they went into that furnace watch this they didn't say king we're not going they went in that means if the president if our governor said we need to go to the fiery furnace let's go let's go with our families don't just simply say no man I'm just gonna stand against that I rebuke the devil that's not the devil in this case the king was bad and the three boys said we're ready throw us in they went together that's number one number two I want you to notice that happened is when they got there they got loosed from their chains they went there bound they got out loosed the second thing that I want to say when you are together with your family when you are on a lockdown in your house don't let the robe of fear bind you loose yourself from the robe of doubt from the robe of unbelief loose yourself from the robe of what's gonna to happen to us we're gonna lose our job loose yourself from the rope if one of the if one of your siblings is sneezing or if one of your siblings is coughing loose yourself from the rope. that's it that's it we're gonna die loose yourself from the robe of fear that what's happening right now on the news what's happening right now in the stores what's happening with toilet paper what's happening with all of these restrictions on our communities could unintentionally I don't think the president the governor and our authorities and health uh, health people they're not doing that intentionally but the the enemy can use the facts to bring fear into our life and when we are alone in the furnace we have to be loosed from fear let fear be outside but it cannot be inside of our house in our house fear has no place 
That means in our house we have love, we have peace and we have joy in the Holy Spirit. In our house we have the presence of God. In our house we have the joy of the Lord. In our house we have faith. In our house we have victory. In our house we have hope. In our house we have future. In our house we have light. In our house it's not a place of darkness. In our house you turn to your children and say we're going to get through this. You turn to your spouse and says this too shall pass. You turn to your other person and say yes we might have to live tight for a little bit but we will get through this. We will be loosed from our bounds. Loosed from our chains. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. We're going to be loosed. Doubt and unbelief are not the same. It's okay to feel doubt. As a Christian it's not okay to believe or have unbelief. I like what somebody said or maybe I said that a long time ago. <laughs> they said when, 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 you, when you quote somebody for the first time you said this particular person said it, the second time you said someone said and the third time you said I said. <laughs> this is probably more than the third time that I mentioned this. Doubt is the is the absence uh, doubt is not the absence of faith it's the questioning of faith doubt is questioning what you believe unbelief is determined refusal to believe doubt is a struggle faced by a believer unbelief is the condition of an unbeliever doubt says I can't believe I need proof unbelief says I won't believe in spite of evidence doubt is honest unbelief is stubborn Doubt is looking for the light. Unbelief is, con is content in the darkness. Doubt is born out of troubled mind and heart. Unbelief is act of the will. It's okay to doubt. But we have to loose ourselves from the chains of unbelief. And our house has to be a place of faith, of God's love. Our place of work where we are at has to be a place where we carry the light and the love of Jesus Christ and the world needs this more than ever before because when the world is dark they need the light and that light my friend is right there when you are closed in in your house lose yourself from fear maybe the business is slow maybe the kids are out of school <laughs> so somebody said that if the scientists don't find a cure the parents having all their kids at home will find a cure <laughs> they're so happy they want, they want to get their kids quickly back to school and so the cure will be found but for us we're not waiting for a cure to find our joy our joy is in Jesus our joy is in, 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 in the Lord Jesus Christ and so loose yourself from fear don't walk in fear don't think fear don't speak fear loose yourself from there but I want you to see another thing that happened the Bible says in Daniel not only that verse 21 it says but these men were bound in their coats and their trousers and their turbans and their other garments and were cast into the middle of the furnace of fire verse 24 the king says did we not cast three bound in the midst of the fire they answered and said lord yeah, true O king look he said i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire go together be loosed from your bounds. Uh, with, with that said, don't get bound right now. It's easy to have a lot of free time as a young person and get yourself bound in pornography. Because you have so much free time and you get yourself bound by entertainment where all you do is you watch things that entertain your flesh. In the fiery furnace, don't get bound, get loosed. Do not let this time be a time where you get out of it and now you have depression. Now you've gained 30 extra pounds. Now you got a porn addiction. Now you have an alcohol addiction because you started to sip every single night. Do not let this time bind you. Let this time be loosed at this time. Loose yourself. That means you simply you get up still early and pray. You read the word. You simply you resist the temptation. When you have more free time, take time to read the word of God. Take time to pray. Take time to listen to the books. Take, take time to be loose. Don't be bound by this time because this time will pass. They will be you'll be stepping into a new season. But do not get bound at this time. Be loosed at this time. Somebody say amen. Number 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 three. The Bible says they walked watch this not only they got loosed they started to walk in that furnace now there was not a lot of uh, room there um, 
maybe it's like this stage so not a lot of walking back and forth but they were walking see what caught Cain's attention is not only that they were free it's the fact that they were walking so what I want to talk about right now is this, is while you are on the lockdown, start to walk. Meaning work on the things you did not have time to work on before this. Which projects were laid, were held back because you were busy? Which books needed to be read but you just did not have time? Which toilet is still leaking in the house? which sink is still leaking at the house which sprinkler is still broken which book that's supposed to be somebody needs to start writing it and it's laying there which song needs to be written which project needs to be completed which blog needs to be started which idea needs to be implemented begin to walk not only be loosed but also begin to walk now you might not have a lot of space but you do have the time and begin to walk why because before you can walk out you have to learn to walk in you have to learn to walk in. This is a good moment. Right now, like for me, I made it a goal. Before they lift the quarantine, I'm going to finish the book. So each day, now I have a little bit more time to write the book because the gyms are closed. Praise God. <laughs> the gym took so much time and now I, I have more free time. And then we have things that we are uh, creating right now, systems even in the church for discipleship. We have a little bit more time. Why? Because this is the moment not only to be loosed from fear and not to be bound by sin, but this is the moment to begin to walk. This is the moment to begin to create certain things that you've had on your heart. You just had no time. Begin to walk. Somebody say amen. Don't touch your neighbor, but tell your neighbor, begin to walk. That your family members say begin to walk even right now in the in in the living room begin to begin to walk some of you you need to paint that garage that's your walking this is the time you need to plant that garden that's your walking you need to start that blog that's your walking you need to begin to do that thing that you wanted to do that's your walking for some of you need to clean that garage to clean that car that's your walking begin to walk this is the moment not to sit and get fat but get up and do something not to sit and get lazy and become a couch potato but begin to walk begin to do something begin to read begin to write begin to listen begin to walk create something begin to walk somebody say amen the bible says they were beginning to walk and then this is what happens the the, the king said this they were walking in the midst of the fire and they were not heard and the form of the fourth is like the son of god can I mention the next thing is Jesus is with you right there where you are at right now I had this situation one time and I asked God for answers why did you allow this to happen why was this not resolved like I thought it would be resolved and I even had prophetic words that helped me to have a certain expectation and it didn't work out like that and as I prayed I said Lord give me an answer Lord give me an answer and I never got the answer and I felt the Holy Spirit said he says I never gave Job an answer of why his suffering came I gave him my presence Joseph did not get an answer why his brothers rejected him but he always had God's presence with him and I just want to tell somebody right now David says in in Psalm he says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death when God doesn't give you answers he gives you his presence when God doesn't give you answers he gives you his peace and so while it's good to ask for an answer it's good to say God give me an explanation God you need to tell me why but what I want to tell you this is don't let your why stop you from receiving his presence and his peace because in here it does not say that Jesus gave them an answer of why this happened he just showed up See, God does not owe me an answer, but I need His presence. Some things will be only explained on the other side of the eternity. But right now what I need is I need His peace and I need His presence. And the Bible says is that Jesus was just, God was just there. When you don't get an answer or an explanation, rely on His presence. Lastly, and we're going to pray. And that is this. The Bible says the king asked the boys, the men, the young men to come out and when they came out the king started to praise God and then the king the Bible says he did this and the king promoted these guys in the province of Babylon God will use your story to bring him glory